So there's been a bit of an issue with this room and that's that it's very small. What we need to do is we need to make it a little bit bigger purely because we can fit more things in. We can fit a console here and most importantly possibly is, you know, it's got a good photo of the whole organ. Right now you just, you cannot get the whole organ in any shot, anybody putting their iPhone on in the museum and stuff, you just cannot get it all. So we're gonna move back to this. This used to be storage around the back, but this is stud wall that's in between. It's just plasterboard and wood. We're gonna work through it, go back, and then it's twice as big, and we can fit more things in it. So that is a plan. I've just got to figure out where to store all the crap that was in there. But to be honest, the more the museum gets sorted out, the less requirement for storage there is because everything gets put out on displays. So hopefully that will be fine and we don't need to worry. So what we need to do now is we need to take this off because this is going over there next to this. So in the new room, that's gonna be going off there. So we need to take this off and uh, basically start again. <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come on. Oh yeah. So Joan's organ room at the museum is now bigger and that means we can fit more things including the console to make it more friendly for people to play and people to see it. And there's also more space for more exhibits but we need to paint that first. But we'll worry about that in another time. Today I brought Cosmo, the modular synthesizer, over to the museum to plug into the organ. The first thing we need to do though is make these ranks of pipes, the different types of pipes, addressable and accessible using different notes. How we're going to do that is using our old friend MIDI. This is a MIDI controller and you will remember from the previous updates on this organ that we've made some MIDI to organ converters. That means you plug in a MIDI signal and it'll play the notes. MIDI is like old school USB for musical instruments. And the great thing is with a single MIDI cable that you plug in you can control 16 separate instruments. So that means there's a MIDI channel 1 to 16. If we assign each of these pipe sets to a single channel, let's say the principal pipes go to channel 11, the wooden ones go to channel 12, and so on and so on. That means we can send separate signals to each of these sets, which will make it a lot more usable in the next video when we start building the console, which is the controller for all of this stuff. And for instance, if we have the organ console switches, if we flick these down, where well, we can turn on and off different pipe sets, while still only using a single MIDI cable to the whole thing. With doing this to work with the console, there's loads of other things to be talked about. That's gonna be a separate video entirely, but for today, we're gonna to isolate each of these MIDI channels and we're gonna plug them into the synthesizer and just see if we get anything interesting out of it. So I've adjusted them to listen to four separate MIDI channels. We've got the diapason, we've got the uh, lie shit, I'm not sure where it is, the reeds and the flutes. They're all on separate uh, MIDI channels now and they're accessible right now before we build the console, they're accessible on this circle and so we can flick between them and code different thingamajiggies. To show you what I mean, we can flick between each of the chests. Right now, it's not coming into play all at the same time, but we'll think about that in a little bit. Today, we're gonna mess around and see what we can do with this and the synthesizer. I didn't do this setup beforehand because it's quite hard to play them all together now uh, without using a console that's built to drive this, but we can control all of them separately and the synthesizer at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Let's give it a go. So let's start by messing with the sequencer plugged into the separate organ ranks. Thank you. 
And then we've got a mic that's going to record the organ and I'll put them together afterwards. This means that the synths sound crisper and they don't interfere with the organ sounds because, you know, it'll be in my headphones. So it's now at a stage that this can be played with other instruments, like the synthesizer. You'll notice that I didn't go for long, strong out chords on the organ with the synthesizer. That's because, well, there's a bit of an issue. I've tuned this by ear, and usually that's fine because the temperament between the octaves, the C and C, do 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 or whatever it is, um, that is always set out, like maybe it's got frets. Or the curve on the oscillators in the analog synthesizer match up to the notes. The issue is when tuning by ear on something like this, the notes might bounce around in between the octave. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, uh, all of those notes, I've been doing that by getting the intervals to sound good in my head. 
And the issue is it's slightly out of equal temperament that all of the other instruments are on. So reluctantly, I'm gonna have to tune this with a tuner in the next video. I know to some people that's probably good use because I've seen a few comments saying that it is a bit out of tune. And preferably, to me, I think it sounds great. It sounds like the kind of piano you'd find in the back of a pub. I love the wide tuning. I like the fact that it doesn't sound perfect and perfectly equal temperament, purely because then it sounds less, like on a computer, and it sounds technically worse. But I personally think that a bit of rubbishness adds to a goodness. In my opinion, a slightly dodgy piano sounds better than the most perfect piano in the world. That's purely because it's got more character and it's just less boring sounding. And that's what I think this one does. But regardless, in order to make this play better with things like this and other instruments, yeah, sadly, it's gonna have to go equal temperament. So I'm going to be tuning that in the next video, likely with a kitchen knife and spoon, but we'll see how that goes. Also, the next step, as well as making it play a little bit better with the synthesizers for the next time around, is we're going to have a go at getting this working. This is the foot pedal. It's the original one that came out of the house in Bristol. This is still in pretty good functioning condition. All the switch contacts around the back are still good looking. We'll have a look at that next week. Unfortunately, the keyboard, which we'll look at after this in another video, is a little bit worse for wear. It's a bit water damaged so I might be looking for another keyboard. I'm not sure yet, we'll gauge that in the next video, but we're gonna turn this basically into a MIDI controller, a MIDI keyboard. Right now, it's got loads of wires dangling off the ear air and everywhere, which are now obsolete and we don't require, so we just need one wire go into each of the keys and then we'll have that wired into a microprocessor so one MIDI cable can come out and what and that will wire into whatever else is kind of plugged in between this and the console and the organ and stuff. Here's a question to the organ know-it-alls out there that know about all this stuff. What does this do? Is this a preset button? Is that what it's for? I need to figure that out before the next video because I need to know what to plug it into. By the way, this weekend is an out of season open day at the museum so you can pop along. I've been talking about the whole process in this video for the past three weeks and stuff on frequent videos over on Patreon. Just chatting about the nitty gritty, the process of making the room larger, worries and hopes and stuff like this about these projects and the various ideas, chatting through ideas and stuff. So if you'd like to see those extra live streams, samples and extra songs and stuff, then go and check out on Patreon. Because needless to say, it helps support a project like this and the museum as a whole. I don't think the museum would exist if it wasn't for it. So either pop along or have a look on Patreon or just watch the videos regardless. It's all good. Anyway, until next time, I'm Luke Mum No Computer. This is Jones Organ. This museum's not obsolete. This is a... That was getting a try. Have a lovely time. Toodle-doo.